He's screaming right here now. He says, I don't want to tell any lies. Next time, just say no. <laughs> so he screams in that sequence. Check, check it out. It's a really good, it's a really good old movie. Tom Hulse. I, 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 it's H-U-L-C-E. So it could be Hulky. It could be H-U-L-C-E. could be Hulsey, Hulse, Hulky, Hulsey. But it's H U. L C E and he was Amadeus, or he was not Amadeus, but he was Mozart. Hulch. But he was in Amadeus Hulch. the movie. He was also Amad he was in Amadeus as Mozart on Broadway too. So he's also a Broadway actor. He's been in Ten Men. He's been in countless movies. Great actor. John Turturro's in it. Benicio del Toro is actually in Fearless. Plays Manny. Great character. Uh, Rosie Perez, of course, great performance. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. He, he, Jeff Bridges, we were surprised Jeff Bridges was not nominated for Best Actor, as he should have been, but he, he wasn't. Um, I, I don't know. All-star cast. John Turturro was the guy I was thinking of his name. Um, a lot of that uh, actor there in this scene right here is actually good too. All star cast is another reason to see it. Peter Weir, Iglesias is the guy's novelist. He was a novelist that wrote it. Raphael Iglesias or something like that. It was based upon a novel. I didn't know that either till tonight, but it was an adapted screenplay. So, you know, I thought it's it's executed in a very cinematic way. It's not an auteur piece, really. I don't think you would say that. It's not like a you know a level of Igmar Bergman and stuff, but it's yeah, it's got a powerful impact. You know, when you watch it, I was affected when I saw it in the early '90s. It was a 1993 movie. When I saw it in the movie theater, I was affected. So it had a powerful impact on me. And actually, a true story. When my friend Rob and I, who's also a playwright, he does movie making too. We took the video camera and went out and just started making these weird little movies in high school. We'd make these little short films and we'd release them for like the English class for, for you know, it was more like for, for creative writing class. And, and, and then, you know, we were also big in the theater department, but we'd go out and make these little movies. <sighs> there was some movies that we would kind of make homage to in our little short films that we'd make, or even, we even tried to do a feature in high school too, a couple of times. And we went out to this grave, Yard in Fort Worth. I, I know the exact. I don't know the exact one. I can't think of it. It's, it's on the other side of West Seventh Street, but it's it's a graveyard. And I went out with a trench coat because I think I was wearing Rob's trench coat because Rob used to wear a trench coat because he'd pretend like it was like this brown tan trench coat that was like kind of E. Mark Bergman style filmmaker trench coat. It was like his filmmaker coat. And then we'd have the little tripod. We'd set up the tripod and put the little video camera on the tripod. It was actually a VHS camera. And uh, we would just go to town. So we, we just did this whole improv scene where we went to this graveyard. And I was running around the graveyard. I don't know if you have this footage, but I was running like kind of to the side and kind of running and showing my hands in the air, screaming really loud, I'm alive, I'm alive, as I ran over these graves. I didn't kick any of the graves over, but I'd run over the graves. I was very disrespectful, but... We did the shot anyway. It was an homage to Fearless. Because <laughs> he kind of does that in, in the movie. We actually really did that. And another time we did, we made a short film for creative writing class called Solace. It was a trailer for a movie that we wanted to make later. That He, he was writing screenplays in, in high school. He was a prodigy. I didn't even know screenplay format until he introduced me to Sid Field. Not in person, but into the book. And uh, he'd break out with his full, you know, 200-page script, you know, John Melia style, right in the hallway. You know, and I'd be walking to class. I was like, hey, I've got this script. It was this big, you know, manuscript, you know, script with, like, fade in and, you know, dissolve and all this, you know. I was like, what is this stuff? It'd be binded. It'd have, like, professional cover. And, you know, and he, he didn't even bother to send it to Hollywood. He just approached me with a script. I'm, like, looking through this because it's like in our minds we already knew we were going to be filmmakers. We were going to be artists. We might as well just start doing this stuff, you know. But we, we, we approached it in a very, very professional studio way, even though we were in high school. And this is during Fearless. Fearless had computer weir. Fearless had come out. And, like, we, we knew everything. Like, we, when we saw Reservoir Dogs, we only saw it 
because Rob was a fan of Harvey Keitel. Nobody really knew who Harvey Keitel back then was until until Reservoir Dogs. But he did. He knew Mean Streets, and we knew Mean Streets, we knew Scorsese. We'd talk about Scorsese in the theater class. So Harvey Keitel was the staple. When we were in Austin, they were playing Reservoir Dogs in 1992, maybe 93 or so. And, of course, we went to go see, it, see Harvey Keitel. We didn't realize we had seen one of the greatest movies ever made, or at least of our time, of our, of our generation, of Generation X. And uh, that was only because of the fact that we were, we were up to times. And, and, and I think we were probably NYU level when we were in high school. We were already doing, like, NYU work on our own, doing our own research on Sid Sidfield. To be honest, to, to be really c- cleverly honest, I hate to say this, but we probably could have taught an NYU film class and, and probably have to have a lesson plan. We'd, we'd, we'd be sending out people and we would know, we would be quoting Sid Field, talking about Scorsese movies, you know. And of course, Scorsese could have taught us because he would have been talking about John Ford. We weren't, we, we didn't know the level of old school cinema that Scorsese would have known. We would have learned when we went to NYU, but we could have still taught a modern day filmmaking class and it got by and even got paid in high school at the age of 17, 18, or even, you know, I was, I was still in high school in 19. But anyway, when he brought me Solace, it was a full-on script between our pages. We, we were never going to really be able to do this, but he had, he had it cast as mine. The theater department, people were cast. He had everything ready. We had no budget. We only had a video camera, not even a boom mic. And we were really going to attempt to begin this feature film in high school. You know, there's one of them. One of them. We, we, we actually attempted one that we worked on for two years off and on called Blue Season, which we did half or parts of it, uh, going into college level. And we got w- one of our friends into NYU, into Tish. Tish accepted him, NYU Film School. It was uh, uh, um, uh, Brandon Carter who got accepted. We, we even planned cinematography shots and everything. I was even discussing uh, cinematography, and I was one of the actors in it. And uh, anyway, that was another whole different project. Solace was a, like a side project. There was also another feature. So we were like working on like two features, planning two features in high school with no budget. <laughs> and when you, when you have no budget, everything goes to a slow crawl. But yet we were being, sh- sh- you know, shuffled, shuffled around by our parents' car. We would borrow our parents' car. We had a car, temporarily had a car. We could get to certain locations and plan shots. This we went on for like two years. Storyboards were made. Scripts, schedules were released. Once we got to college and I was writing in Wesley, and we were still working on high school project while we were in college, you know, still trying to launch something. It's very difficult to make a feature. Short film, not so bad. Short film, not so bad. We went, we went about it without thinking of the short film. So we went about it going feature, feature, feature. But if we were a short film, short film, short film, we would have got probably more solid work done. All of those feature attempts turned into short films. So, and we have a lot of footage, quite a bit of footage, probably a few hours, you know, just on video camera. Side projects for the English department, doing like the Great Gatsby, you know, like a scene. But anyway, what ended up happening with Solace was uh, it turned into this little short 10 minute piece that we, we, sh- we, we tried it, we, we tried to be very serious about it. The other day I was watching M- Monkey Shines. And they show a slow segment of a wheelchair being highlighted in the trailer. Exactly what we did in the theater department when we did Solace. Because Solace was about a, a guy in a wheelchair, uh, you know, and his his struggle with you know living in a wheelchair and abandonment of God. And it was these big Ingmar Bergman kind of aspects. And we were going to shoot in black and white and all this stuff. We weren't trying to do action films. See, we aspired in high school to be like Bergman. <laughs> Maybe Woody Allen at the most, but like, you know, Bergman or even maybe Scorsese. I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't try to do like a gangster film, but we could have, but we, we didn't really try to do that. We mostly were just, we're, we're trying to hit upon like philosophical points about life and philosophy. And when we showed it, the creative writing class, we, we finally did the wheelchair sequence where he goes across the horizon. Us, the horizon was right in the center of the shot. You know, you know, uh, John Ford would have been like, what are y'all doing? This is crazy. You put the, you know, you put the horizon at the top or you put it at the bottom. We didn't know, but we just put it right at the the, the center, which actually looked kind of cool. And we had the, yeah, I know. Just give me a second. Okay. We had the wheelchair going across. Okay. I know. I know. I'm, 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 ta- I'm, I'm about 10 minutes. And anyway, while we did it, we were doing impressions of, Harvey Keitel in Bad Lieutenant 
when the breakdown scene where he's driving, like, ee, we were doing like side impressions and stuff. So we were still not taking it completely serious, but we did try to do these two features during the time when Fearless was already had come out. We were inspired by these movies as we were doing it, you know. We even, uh, this is the last story about, about Blue Season 2, when we were uh, going into college or when we were leaving high school going into college. We turned my mother's entire house into a studio. We brought in fog machines and lights. We did bring in lights. We had halogen lights. We had the, the whole thing lit up for a dream sequence. Completely destroyed the bedroom floor with... The fog juice gets on the floor and sticks like glue. So by the time we were done with the sequence of the dream sequence, which had, took place in his bedroom, my entire floor was glazed over with like this glue from the, anyway, I'll tell you about it later. Watch Fearless. Just notice there's a hearse right there. Can I pull the hearse? Mm-hmm. Kind of like Sam's. A, a lot of stuff. You kind of go, they kind of, in Winko, they kind of make you go in a certain way, though. It's like a maze. Yeah. So you, you start off and then these waters are almost like a haunted house, and then you, you have to go a certain way at the beginning. Right. You have to go through here and then go to the produce, and then it gets into yeah, like Walmart. Yeah. That's not a good deal. This is owned by the company. I mean, it's owned by the employees. You said it's owned by the employees. They have a clearance on the balloons right here. It's a clearance sale on balloons. If you want a, a balloon. There. What is it? Yeah, Winko's kind of tripped out. Yeah. Then you just have regular stuff right here. It's a little different than you got the produce over here. We got flats of water back here, kind of like Sam's. It's a mixture of Sam's and Walmart. It's kind of what it's like. A bunch of candy right here. And they've got bulk, like bulk coffee and candy and nuts, stuff like that right here. Spices, you have spice. Yeah, I'm looking, hang on. This is all your pasta and bulk foods. Yeah, this is the coffee, all the coffee right here. It's ground, fresh ground coffee. Deli section further down. Actually, I didn't know Winko was this cool. Then you get private, privatized candy. Well, I mean, singular candy. I guess you can just buy, like, one piece of candy. Um, this is kind of like something you could do for school. If, you, if you're going to sell candy at school. And I used to do that. I used to sell this right here. Please, no samples. We'd make... I know, no. We'd make a lot of money. We'd sell this on the school bus right here. We'd, we'd carry a little Remember burial... A, bar, not a, a barrel. Not a burial, but a burial... A bar, a, not a barrel, but it's like... What is it? I want to break the wall. You're not supposed to do that. You take, what you do is you buy bulk of now and laters, which is kind of like what this is. And you go on the bus and you could sell them for, for a quarter or four for a dollar. I mean, really it was, it was 10 cents a piece. Or you could do eight for a dollar. I don't remember the, the price that I, I did at the time. Yeah, the other now and laters right here. That's what I sold right here. You get like a tub, it's like a little tub, like a pretzel tub, but you empty it out and put candy in it. And then you just, you know, you'd sell like four of them for a quarter or something, eight of them for a dollar or something like that. 10 for a dollar or something. Yeah, I remember the AP's, AP sausage. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, tamales, yeah, this is like holy. See the other one go? Mm -hmm. Right, they they set up the Winkos differently. By straight up salami. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Some special. We'll try to see if they have any Winko brand so I can show the Winko slogan. Winko sounds so. Every time I hear the word Winko, I think of Best in Show with Christopher Guest, where he's like, um, "I'm gonna walk Winky." That whole scene, Eugene Levy. It's, I think it's one of the funniest scenes in movies. It's, he looks at his wife and he's going to walk the dog. It's like, I'm going to walk Winky. Um, to me, it's, it's probably the funniest moment in a comical history. I'd say I'm looking for a, a, 
basically like a brand a brand title to see if I can show you Winko Wink or Winko. It's really the title is Winko. So they're owned by the employees. It's an employee owned company. Um, they've got a lot of big dog section for dogs. I'm gonna walk Winky. This is Winko though. This sounds like Winky. But that's incredible. You ever see the funniest movie ever? It's best in show. The dog Christopher Guest plays a guy. He talks like this. And I didn't know Christopher Guest was actually royalty. Ooh, okay, here's some of the cat food. Yeah, Christopher Guest is actually he's actually royalty. He's um he has relations with the Parliament of the UK. So he's actually kind of like a prince. Where he talks like this and Beast and show, kind of talking about bloodhounds. This is a treat stick right here. I'm trying to see if I can find anything that says Winko on it. Even like a, yeah, I did find something. Um, under the gift cards right here. There it is. Yeah, that bunch of refrigeration. Uh, huge refrigeration area, so. Probably, I would say, more size of Walmart than uh, Sam's. About, about, it looks a lot like Sam's, but kind of the size of Walmart. Um, not as big as Sam's, but they have all this kind of stuff. So, probably a combination between Sam's and Walmart. And pricing about the same. We, we, we look at pricing, and it's about the same as Walmart. But it's owned by the employees. So the employees actually have stock within the company. So they own the company. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of democracy in action. And they have wine, too. The wine section right here. Goes right into baking. They're more like stock items. If you're going to do a zombie movie... Winko would be a cool one to use. It's kind of spread out a little bit. You can kind of see. Natural lighting. I don't think so. Did you find what you were looking for? They got a lot of stuff. It's like kind of like almost like Sam's, like Sam's and Walmart put together. It's a little like Sam's. They also at the checkout counters, they sell Nutella. It's a pretty good brand right here. It's a European chocolate. It's very very popular in, in Europe. Let's see if it shows. Made right here. The Sands Canada. In U.S., so I guess now they distribute it in Canada and U.S. now. So I got corn nuts. Remember the scene in Heather's with a Winona Ryder? If you ever seen a Winona Ryder movie and uh, Christian uh, trying to figure it out? Oh, what's up? Help me find frozen ravioli because I think it's oh, a good deal. Oh, frozen That's always ravioli. In a weird, it's always in a weird spot. Christian Slater. Anyway, Heather's. And then she eats the corn nuts and dies. All right. These are ranch, though, ranch corn nuts. These are only 80 cents, corn nuts. Yeah. They got the original. Two twenty five.
five on Roma. All right, we went with the Tony's pizza. It's th about three bucks, two ninety eight. It has a game on the back, so if you like board games. It's always in the weirdest spot. I keep missing it or something. Okay. Looking for the frozen frozen ravioli. They also have an Easter egg right here if you look right up this way. That's a little, uh, a little dragon. A little Winko dragon right, right over there. Pretty cool. It's right over by the uh, frozen veggies. This is the egg section right here. They got the middle. Right be great if you're trying to do like cold uh, sense memory exercises as an actor and kind of go back here, but you don't want to go back here too long though. But it gets really cold. Okay, we're headed for rice. We're looking for rice for uh, what are we looking for again? Rice. Uh, let's see. Rice to go with the Chinese food. So we've got this Chinese food right here. Shrimp fry. Now we got to find. Oh, there's some rice right here. Is there a specific type of rice that you're looking for? Whatever's cheapest, but I don't want to be over the stove. Okay. It's not too bad. Instant brown rice. I remember sometimes the white rice actually has more vitamins. It's got the Winko brand on it. Let me see. Look, white. honey. I'm going to walk Winko. <laughs> Look, honey. I'm going to walk Winko. I'm gonna walk Winky. The dog was called a Winky. Sometimes the prices aren't the cheapest over here because a lot of people have food stamps called SNAP in Texas. Oh, SNAP? Like 85% of people have SNAP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much the same price as Walmart. All right, okay. Pretty good produce section. I think about 33. Okay, not too bad. So you can see kind of like everybody checking out right here. We'll check out section. Little Winko bags right here. It's not bad on price on the bag. Little handbag there. Little two dollar bag right here.
Did you get enough bananas? And don't before you know, but don't, don't forget before you leave, you can get the grab and go toy store. Uh, they do have the Ninja Warriors. And stickers and tattoos. As long as you get the Bonds candy and sticky hands. And the fidget fun. Don't forget about the fidget fun right here. And the mesh fruit balls. And double bubble, too. Grab and go. Can you help me out? Yeah, yeah, I'll help you out. Sorry.